Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Industrial Chemistry option. And this is video number 22 on detergents. Up till now, we've been having a little bit of a look at soaps and soaps are by and large uh, natural products or at least produced from natural materials. But detergents are synthetic. Detergents are ones that have been produced industrially using uh, chemistry principles. And um, they have in a lot of ways a very similar role or play a similar role to that of soaps in that they are capable of acting as surfactants. They're capable of um, creating emulsions, um, particularly between oil and water. Um, but they also have some differences with soaps. And we're going to investigate three of these in this particular video. The first of those is the molecular structure and how they compare with um, soaps. Secondly, the chemical composition, and that obviously is going to affect the molecular structure and also the interactions. And uh, as a third area, something to link into our chemical monitoring and management topic, their effects in hard water. So let's first look at molecular structure. So the first thing to do is, I guess, to quickly recap soaps. Now, soaps, here's an example of a soap sodium stearate from the stearic acid. This is a long chain molecule. You can see here the hydrophobic tail contains all these um, carbon, carbon bonds. Uh, you could tell this is a saturated fat um, because all of these carbons are single bonds. So this is a saturated, uh, this was at least originally a saturated fat from which we have produced our soap molecule. And you'll notice the hydrophilic head, the region at the front, is just this, um, uh, what I'll call an alkanoate uh, ion at the front here. Okay, so it's the ion that forms, it's the anion that forms from a carboxylic acid. So if we added a hydrogen here, then that would be the um, the acid itself, but this is the anion attracts to the sodium um, cation, and this is our typical structure of a soap. The important thing when we're looking at these structures is this hydrophilic head. The um, nature of the tail is similar, um, though not identical, but in, in all um, for all practical purposes, that, that um, combination of um, single or double bonded carbons and hydrogens um, is, is not something that we need to look at too much in terms of our detergents, but the head is very important. So in soaps, the head is always an anionic. Um, it is produced, as, a, as I said, a result of that um, alkanoic acid losing the hydrogen. Um, it's actually come from a, um, a ester bond and it bonds with the um, sodium ion. In detergents, they can be anionic, but they can also be cationic or even non-ionic. And these are the ones that we need to look at in a little bit more detail. So when we start to look at the chemical composition of each of these different types of detergents, then we notice that salt, soaps are the salts of sodium or potassium ions of fatty acids. So this previous one um, on the previous slide was uh, sodium stearate, we could have potassium stearate as well. Detergents are hydrocarbons with, as I said, hydrophilic heads that consist of either an anionic um, head, and usually that's a derivative of a sulfate group. Now, obviously, the anion is the negative, so this is our anionic head. Uh, cationic, so this is going to be something that's based on an ammonium group, so an NH2 group. Uh, this is going to be our cat ionic uh, head. And then an ethoxy group. So something that has an OH group attached to it, this will be our non-ionic. Now, I'm sure if we're going to um, have something that is hydrophilic, the only things that we know of that are non-ionic but are still um, able to attract uh, water are others uh, molecules which are polar. So we'll talk about non-ionic, but hopefully you'll have in your mind the fact that if it's going to be attracting water, it's going to have to be a polar head anyway. So anionic, cationic, and non-ionic, and they're the three different types, and we'll look at these in a little bit more detail um, in class. This just gives you a bit of an overview at this point in time. 
The final thing we want to have a quick look at is the effect in hard water. Now we know that soaps form a grey scummy precipitate um, and that precipitate limits the ability of the soap to create froth um, bubbles uh, when you're trying to wash with it. And effectively that's because the hard water contains uh, calcium and magnesium ions and the anionic head is going to be attracted to these ions and they're going to form a precipitate. For reasons that are probably um, obvious, anionic detergents can also form a complex in the same thing. So they will um, interact with hard water and again um, uh, reduce the efficiency, less frothing as we get some sort of a um, complex or precipitate forming, which means the anionic detergents are not as effective in um, hard water. On the other hand, cationic and non-ionic detergents are not going to interact with the calcium and magnesium ions in the same way. And as a consequence of that, they are effective in hard water. So even if the water is hard and it doesn't usually lather particularly well, using a cationic or non-ionic detergent uh, will still give you a similar sorts of results and overcome that problem that uh, is often created by hard water. Now we need to look at each of these um, detergents in a little bit more detail and make comparisons between them, uh, but I think we'll save that for the next video. Thanks for watching.